thus far, yeah, we haven't got to that period on the calendar yet. And your favorite week is when all the coaches get fired. Yes, that is my Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Just families ruined and uh, yeah. lives uprooted. Brings me real joy. Bad heart. Bad yeah. heart, as we the know. The worst. As we know. It's the IDP show, now you know. Welcome to the IDP Show. I'm your host, Josh Raymer, joined in the Soad Shack tonight. On my right, Adam Markham. On my left, Bobby Reynolds. Gentlemen, this feels like deja vu. How we doing, boys? <laughs> yeah, y'all wearing the same clothes. That's I know. strange. People are yeah. like, are they just wearing the same thing, or did they do back-to-back? We're just wearing the same thing. We're recording this a few days later. Yeah, don't tell yeah. them how sausage made, Josh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Didn't mean to take y'all behind the curtain. No, we are recording this uh, here on February 22nd. It is the... IDP free agency preview. Not a lot has happened thus far, but we are recording this on the 22nd. So if something wild happens, somebody's released or retires or something crazy happens before it gets released, y'all will know what's going on. But there's been a few. The Patriots released a couple guys. Eddie Jackson got released. Eddie Jackson got released. So there's been a few guys, um, you know, who have uh, hit the market, Bobo, yeah. in this offseason. But thus far, yeah, we haven't got to that period on the calendar yet your favorite week is when all the coaches get fired yes that is my mm -hmm. christmas yeah <laughs> just families ruined and uh yeah. lives uprooted brings me real joy bad heart bad yeah. heart as we the know worst. as we know so yes we are going to be going through the idp free agents in this episode using mike wollert's article kind of as the basis here which you can check out the idp show.com all of mike's work will be free in the off season, except for the stuff that we put into the IDP show draft kit. Uh, so go over there, check it out. If you're listening to this episode, the article is live on the IDP show.com. Mike ranked his top 40 IDP free agents. Uh, Addy, you put together the free agent tracker, which is also available on the website. So you can go over there <laughs> and see all the, all the players that are available. Uh, they're, tackles their sacks their points per game Bobo, are you okay i just started thinking about like if you had trackers on all these guys and you're just <laughs> watching like what's daniel hunter doing in uh i don't know where why is he standing right behind me on the <laughs> golf course boom that'd be awesome yeah so yes the tracker just tells us uh who actually is a free agent it also not makes me like think a about home the, and uh, beacon hunger hunger games are you a Hunger Games fan? Dude, love Hunger Games. Look at you. You surprise me every day. Lord of the Rings fan. He won the Hunger Games. He did win the Hunger Games. His name's on the trophy Zaire right next to Titty Sprinkles. Rrr. Bolton something at law. Yes, sir. Law firm. I've been to law. So, cool. um, boys, let's jump right into it because there's a lot of juicy names on this list. Rrr. So uh, we'll kick things off with uh, Mike's top 10, and then we can fold in anyone that you all want to bring up as well. Uh, so, kicking off at number one, Levante David, Frankie Louvu, Patrick Queen, Antoine Winfield Jr., Daniil Hunter, Josh Allen, Bobby Wagner, Aziz Alshair, uh, Justin Matabike, and Cam Curl at number 10. So, let's start right there at the top uh, with a trio of linebackers and Levante David one, Frankie Louvu two, Patrick Queen three. Of this bunch, Addy, I think I might be most excited for Patrick Queen. Yeah, I think so. Patrick Queen feels like that Bobby O'Karake, yes. you know, upgrade is up. coming. Yes. Yeah, we see that all the time. Um, and Patrick Queen, you know, I mean, got four years there in Baltimore, got to learn alongside Roquan Smith. You feel like that had to have helped him uh, in his career. And so um, I'm excited about this this second contract here for Patrick Queen. I think that he's at, he's going to get paid pretty well. I imagine he's going to be one of the higher paid linebackers on the market. I think he'll be the higher highest paid linebacker. Maybe so. On the I mean, remember we just saw Tremaine Edmonds get a crazy amount of money. Four years, seventy two million, I believe it was. I don't know that we'll see Queen get quite that, no, but I, I, don't I think, think so we either. could see a five year, fifty million dollar deal for Patrick. Queen. I could Queen. see that. And a great landing spot here for Mike Seattle Seahawks, uh, huge, firing yeah. uh, following. Mike McDonald, not Mike McDaniel, as I said repeatedly on one of the previous episodes, following his old defensive coordinator over to um, the Seattle Seahawks there, losing Jordan Brooks, losing Bobby Wagner. I could very easily see Patrick Queen sliding right in. And if he does, oh, baby, big money, nice landing spot, coach that you're familiar with. Bobo, that seems like a recipe for potentially a top 12 LB season. Yeah, I wanted to check and see to make sure that there was no way that the Ravens could keep in. The Ravens have um, essentially about a million dollars in cap for next season. So 
Um, even with some maneuvering around, I don't think there's going to be any way for them to uh, to hold on to him, which I think is best for not only Pat Queen, but also for Trenton Simpson. Can't wait to see what um, year two looks like um, as he kind of walks into that Pat Queen role, and maybe even it means a little bump in the points per game for Roquan as well. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're Baltimore and you want to find someone to keep, you're going to want to try and keep Matt Abouke, just yeah. because, like you mentioned, there's no reason to overpay for Queen. That was the reason why you drafted Trenton Simpson. Mm-hmm. They knew this was coming. This yep. was all part of the plan. Uh, I would hate to let Matabuke get away if I was Baltimore. Yeah, I, I think the franchise tag might be in play for Matabuke. It has to. Yeah. I think I think they're going to let uh, Queen walk. Queen was solid in 2023, 13.9 points, 133 tackles, three and a half sacks. Yeah, he is the LB that I'm most excited about from this group. Uh, but, you know, you got a couple stalwarts there in mm-hmm. Levante David and Bobby Wagner. I just kind of see both these guys ending up back with their same teams. Bobby Wagner is a little dicier just because you have the new coach coming over. He's left somewhere and gone gone somewhere else before. He has. So, but could you see a pair of Bobby Wagner with, you know, Patrick Queen yeah. as your kind of linebacker combo there? And then maybe you draft a linebacker. Uh, maybe you sign someone else in free agency next year. Yep. But I don't know that I'll – I don't. I don't necessarily foresee that being like Patrick Queen and then just some journeyman or like you know rookie they throw in there. It reminds me a lot of the. I don't know if it was Hard Knocks or what it was, but the conversation that Dan Campbell had with Tracy Walker when he got to Detroit, he was basically like, "Dude, you're a part of this. You're a part of Detroit. We're you know we're clearly gonna um, gonna keep you around and until then, today." Right. Yeah, he, he reminds Tracy me. He got Cullen, cut. So yeah. sorry, but injuries. I think. But yeah, it, we called that derailed yeah. that. But it does make sense for uh, for both of these teams, even though different coaching schemes. Bobby Wagner is just a Seattle Seahawk. You know, um, there's just there's just certain names that kind of go synonymous with some of these teams, and and I think you're right. I think Devin White is probably the one that's going to walk there uh, for the Bucks. And I think Levante David is going to stick out. I, the question, I can't see Levante anywhere but Tampa Bay. The question would really be for can't. me, how many years do you see these guys playing? A handful. Yeah, you know, two, two or three. Th- yeah, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised. Levante and Bobby Wagner? Maybe. I think they each have maybe a year or two left. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. They're about I 33. Think, I think the wheels are falling off a little more for B-Wags. I could see another like really solid two years for Levante David. He's just... Stat uh, stacking up those stats now though. 183 tackles last year. He was led awesome. the league. I mean that's insane. Was yeah. that his best year potentially? Maybe tackle wise. I think that might have been his most tackles. In Crazy. A season. Crazy that he's like. I mean that truly is aging like fine wine. Now, as much as I think Queen has the best potential for a big fantasy season in 2024, Frankie Louvu is absolutely the most intriguing linebacker to me in free agency mm-hmm. because are you going to see a team? give him the Caden Ellis type of deal and the chance to come in and be this sort of linebacker edge rushing type of weapon. Um, I think so. Like we've seen him used in Carolina. I don't think he's going to be back with the Panthers. I think he probably will land somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, nah, he's should easily get that deal. I think it was like three years, 20 million for Caden Ellis. Mm-hmm. So Frankie Lou is definitely more proven than that. You know where I think I, I could see three years, 30 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. I can see Louvu going to the Titans. Yeah. Titans Deep have a fit. need there for linebackers, and they have uh, roughly sixty million in cap. Um, I think Luvu could get a pretty hefty bag this uh, this off season. Yeah, I think uh, he could be maybe one of the highest paid linebackers. Honestly, I think he'll probably be second behind Patrick Queen. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're yeah. probably right. Uh, we should mention Antoine Winfield Jr. I think it's almost certain that they franchise tag mm-hmm. Antoine yes. Winfield Jr. I think they're going to try to get a long-term deal done with Mike Evans or let him walk, mm-hmm. and uh, I think they'll bring Winfield Jr. back. Boy, Mike Evans, where's he going to go? I Hit know, the man. open market. That's a fun name in Dynasty. Could that be a Kansas City? Oh, my God. Can mm-hmm. you imagine? Fingers crossed. That was what they were saying on the athletic football show. They'd love to see him just be a mercenary and just sign like one or yeah. two-year deals and just mm-hmm. go to these different teams that are chasing rings and – I'm trying mean, to get him over the top. You see that with some Buffalo. of these guys. That'd you know, sick. you see it with uh, Devontae Adams. Look and see what he's done. You know, yeah. um, Nuke has done that to here the last couple of years also. So um, I think Mike Evans is a little younger category than those guys. Yeah, though. I think he's like about to turn 30. Yeah, he got a little bit more left in the tank, yeah. I feel like. Yeah, Yeah. let's look at uh, – I wanted to pull up the – because I could say, oh, the Bills would be fine. But I think, yeah, they're in cap hell. 
They are uh, about fifty-five million over the cap right now. It reminds me like late stage Randy Moss. Oh yeah, to the Pats. Mm-hmm. You oh know, yeah, and just tore it to hell up. How many? How much could, did he have that year? Sixteen. I think he set the record. Twenty-three. Yeah. I think. Oh, was it really? How much? It was absurd. How much could Mike Evans get per year on the open market? Thirty million. I was gonna say thirty yeah, seems like, like I was before. thinking like three years, a hundred million. Yep, I could see know? that. And he's worth it. He is. Yeah. So the Bills will not be making any such moves. They have negative fifty-eight million dollars in effective cap space. We all know how awesome Antoine Winfield is. Let's just say for some reason they don't tag him. Where could Winfield be fun at? Oh man, anywhere. I mean, literally anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. yeah. I mean, he is that. He would get. He would get like, um, twenty million a year, probably. Like, yeah, like a four-year, eighty million. Yeah. I mean, any team could use him. I just don't – like, Brian Burns, Josh Allen, Antoine Winfield feel like if they don't get a deal done, they are going to be tagged. I think Josh Allen is staying in Jacksonville. I think Brian Burns is going to get tagged and traded, if I had to guess. And I think I think they're going to try to bring back a lot of these pieces in Tampa Bay. Mm. So I think it will be Antoine Winfield Jr. back in Tampa Bay. Daniil Hunter, I think, is going to hit the open market. Um, it looks like Mike has down the Rams and the Bears for potential landing spots. That'd be really nice. Um, I've also heard, uh, you know, the second pick for the Bears in the first round. Could that be a Dallas Turner, Jared Verse to pair with Montez Sweat? Wow. But if you pair Daniil Hunter, you've got cap space. I mean, I think they are near the top of the league in terms yeah, of effective cap space. Yeah, Third right now. 54.8 million in effective cap space, which is – Cap space, like, after you sign yep. your rookie picks. Mm-hmm. Hunter's going to get a big payday. I think so, too. I think you could be looking at, I mean, $25, 30000000 million a year. Yeah, I think so. Pretty easy. He getting more than Josh Allen? Um, if Josh Allen were If to Josh sign. Allen signs a new deal, He'd I think. He'd have a longer-term one. Yeah, I think you could see Allen an extra would. year yeah, yeah. tacked on. I got you. But I, I think, think you could per, see. Per year, probably be similar. Yeah. You know? They both make between twenty five or thirty a year. I agree. I think. Three years or so for Hunter, yep. maybe four or five for Allen. Yes, yep. I think absolutely that's in play. Three years, seventy five million for Hunter, something like that. <sighs> yeah, I think you could see. Yeah, like four years, a hundred million for Josh Allen. Daniil's twenty eight. He might be twenty nine. Yeah, the Jags have. Um, so they have about seven million. They have seven. Yeah, seven million in effective cap space. So Hunter's twenty nine point three. Wow. Yeah. So I think I think a team would feel comfortable giving him a two or three year deal. Yeah. I think he's probably gonna want three years. I could see like a two year with a lot of guaranteed money and like a third year uh with maybe an option for the team to get out at that point. Um let's talk about the rest of the top ten though, Aziz Al Shair. Uh now this is this is ranked in terms of IDP usefulness, we should point out. And Mike tends to skew tackle heavy, so you see a lot of linebackers here at the top of the list. Green dot king. Green dot king. Remember, folks. Uh, so Aziz Al I I agree with Mike. I think Tennessee needs to bring Al Shair back. I think they kind of struck gold with this dude last year. And yeah, I, let's see what their cap space. I don't think Tennessee. Al's, I don't think they have a ton. They have uh, fifty nine million. Yeah, they'll. Br- I think they're bringing Al Shair back. That's a bad team right there. Too. Oh yeah. What What would he cost? You think that's like a Two year, maybe twenty million. Yeah, two year, twenty million. Yeah, fifteen. But someone may million. give him a longer deal. Yeah, they could. He what if the could. Cardinals brought him in? Yeah, you know, be. he's twenty six point five, so he's not, you know, not even twenty seven yet. Mm-hmm. So he's another sneaky one to pay attention mm-hmm. to. Cardinals or Raiders, they both have about thirty million in cap, and both need linebacker. Absolutely, bad. Yep. really bad. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, where is D'Amico Ryan's? Is in Houston. Could you see Aziz Al Shair yeah. yeah. coming down to Houston to play alongside That'd of uh, Christian Harris and Henry Tuo Tuo? Yeah, Henry Tuo Tuo. So I think Matt BK is staying in Baltimore. I don't think they let this guy get out the door. Yeah. Um, Cam Curl, Kyle Duggar at uh, ten and eleven here. Uh, I think Cam Curl probably is back with Washington. They have the most effective cap space in the league at sixty one point eight million. And then Duggar, I think, is back in New England as well. They have the second most effective cap space at 60.75 million. So I think it's status quo if those guys go back to their current teams, both with new coaching staff. So who knows what that ends up looking like. Babo, Mm -hmm. one of your favorite guys here at number 12, Jonathan Grenard. Yes, sir. Uh, Would you like to see him back in Houston or go elsewhere? I mean, it's just going to be, you know, it'd be nice to know behind the curtains how much the NFL is going to value Jonathan Grenard. What kind of contract do you think that Grenard brings in? You know, it's going to be a three-year, 
50 million. He'll get paid, I think. Yeah, so I think that that's probably going to price him maybe out of the Houston market. I think so. Houston right now, they do have 50 million uh, in effective cap space going into 2024. So it is a possibility, but I feel like they probably use a draft pick or two um, to maybe replace a Grenard. And then maybe Grenard goes to. Um, Maybe he goes on one of these teams and maybe he does get a bag. He was really good in a contract year. I don't know. I mean, I would love to see him stay at home, but I think it's probably going to be, you know, 70-30 that he leaves at this point. I will say one of the best resources for tracking what these guys could make on the open market is the PFF free agency rankings. They have Brad Spielberger doing the projected contracts, and Brad is, pun intended, money on projecting these deals that these guys are going to get. So he has Daniil Hunter, three years, $65 million total, so about 21.67 per year, $40 million guaranteed. He has uh, Mike Evans, three years, $69 million total, so 23 per year. Mm. And then I wanted to see where some of these other defensive guys, Bryce Huff, this was amazing. We'll get to Bryce Huff a little later. Three years, $50 million, wow. 16.7 per year average. Wow. So uh, I believe we're looking at, uh, yeah, Kyle Duggar. He has just getting essentially the franchise tag one year, 16.2. And he has Cam Curl signing a new, a new deal, four years, 50 million, 12.5 average for Cam Curl. Wow. What's Grenard? Yeah, I was going to look up Grenard. He's got him a little further down here. So um, what about you, Addy? Do you want to see Grenard go somewhere else while I look him up? You know, I mean, I think it would be nice for him to stay there in Houston alongside Will Anderson. Um, I mean, we, we've seen we've seen him prove it now. Pretty much every – I mean, he got banged up the year before, but whenever he's had opportunity, he's been good. He looks good. 15.6 uh, points per game last season, 12 and a half sacks. I mean, that is, that is some good stuff for you a said, guy that's starting to enter his prime. You yeah. said three years 50? Yep. Brad has it at three years 48. Yeah. So $16 million uh, average per year. Hmm. So – I, I, yeah, I, I like it. I don't know that Houston can can I, keep him around. I don't think so. Or that you want to keep him around, right? Because he is like awesome story. Yeah. He, he he has all the makings, and it looks like he's going to be an ascending player, but he still doesn't have like the elite athleticism like mm -hmm. some of these top dogs do. And so, um, I don't know. You, I, I, I tend not to want to buy into those guys too much, right? Those are usually guys I like to sell. Like Grenard, we've, I've talked a ton about selling Grenard. Yeah. Um, but he probably – you probably should have held on to him because yeah. I think he, he just went up in value as the year went on. Any but I way, think now is the time to honestly sell him. Any way they tag him? Uh, I don't think so. Um, because that contract is fully guaranteed. I mean, they'd have to do some cap gymnastics, right? Because and they the, are and a tag at, and edge is probably really expensive. I think a tag of an edge is like twenty five or twenty six million. Yeah, so that's not happening. Yeah. Yes, because gotcha. the Texans are sitting where in terms of cap space? Uh, they're pretty high. They're top ten, fifty one million. Okay, so fifty one million. So they could they could bring it's him probably back. Probably a stretch. They could bring him back. That's a lot of money yeah. though for him. So would here's the question: Would you rather have Hunter, Daniil Hunter, at three years sixty five? 21.67 average, or let's say you're the Bears. You're the Chicago Bears. Do you want Daniil Hunter three years 65 or Jonathan Grenard three years 48? Give me Hunter. I think so too. The question is going to be, though, like, are the Bears going to win it in the next three years? Well, I mean, if Caleb, Caleb Williams is legit. If, if that's legit. a good point. I could see a Colts-type Andrew Luck rookie season run where this – you know, team that was not very good. I haven't mentally processed that Makes yet, a run. That that's possible. And they were good last year. I mean, yeah. defensively, I mean, they were one of the better mm -hmm. run defending teams. So, I mean, that that defense isn't that far if away. If you're pairing yeah. Montez Sweat and Daniil Hunter, oh, it's I mean, we, we give them crap for signing those two linebackers to huge deals, but you've got Edmonds and Edwards, and then you've Brisker. got Brisker. Uh, Brisker back there. You've got – I think they should bring back Kyler Gordon. I hope they do. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson is it, really good. Yes, it's Kyler Gordon and Jalen Johnson, I think, Gordon's are both. there. Okay. Jalen Johnson is the one. Jalen Johnson's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's he's great. So, they have a good team, man. Yeah, they, 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 they're going to keep getting better. <laughs> he's and the it, one always hollering, pay me. Is he? <laughs> yes. Was he him. was good last year, man. <laughs> he was really good. I think I just saw him here I, in I these ranks. I think he was PFF's number one rated corner. Wow. Yeah. So Shout let, out let's see where Jalen comes in here. Uh, so Jalen, uh, Jalen Johnson, Brad has him getting 
franchise tag, it looks like. Right. One year, $18.8 So, so if Chicago has the tag, I think they should use it on Johnson. Yeah, they, they definitely will. So um, I will say the franchise tag for edge rushers, yeah, one year, $22.79 because that's what he has for Josh Allen. So Chicago's um, in a great spot, though. They really are. A lot of money. First overall pick, it's a good spot to be. And presumably going to probably get some good return for Fields. Let's let's yeah. hit the rest of the top 20, and then we'll kind of sparingly talk about the back half here of the top 40. Uh, but we mentioned Grenard at 12, Chris Jones at 13, Devin White at 14, Brian Burns 15, Xavier McKinney 16, Jordan Brooks 17, Chase Young 18, Josie Jewell 19, and Christian Wilkins at 20. Baba, who do you want to call out from that list? I want to talk about Brian Burns. Let's do it. Brian Burns is a guy that last year let us down a little bit in terms of ADP. You know, when we looked at the best ball, when we looked at the redraft ADP, Burns was going, you know, sometimes top five, sometimes top eight edge. Um, but let us down a little bit. Just kind of had a down year, and we've talked about it over the last couple of weeks about – was it just maybe a Carolina thing where you lose week after week after week and he's playing quite a bit of snaps and maybe he's just burnt out with the whole sucking, you know, his whole career there in Carolina. So Brian Burns, I literally looked at Adams, um, his ranks earlier, mostly to look at Brian Burns' age. I think Brian Burns is like 24 years old, like something stupid young right now. Um, We've got it here in the free agent. Tracker. He's twenty five point nine. Still, really, young. really, yep. really young. We just Entering got done, prime. We got done talking about like how old um, Bosa is, how old Aiden Hutchinson is, how old Will Anderson is. They're all right there in that same age together. And I think that if you put Brian Burns in a better situation, you could easily look up and Brian Burns has a fifteen sack season. You yes, can swap Brian. 100%. You can swap Brian Burns and Josh Allen's season out from 2023 to 2024, oh, yeah. and all of a sudden Burns now looks like he's just a a top five edge for the next okay, five years. Okay, here's yeah, the question: Two years younger now. Absolutely. This is this is a fun kind of scenario. Okay, we've talked about get Aiden Hutchinson help for the love of God. Yeah, Lions have 42.5 million and the 29th overall pick. Send it. Sending that for Brian Burns? Hell yeah. Yeah, I think so too. It's rod, baby. Yeah, that for what you're gonna get at twenty nine, if um I think Carolina would be smart to take that deal, get back into the first round, mm -hmm. uh just recoup some draft capital. I don't think Burns get a quarterback. Sure. Yeah, I don't think Burns sure. wants to be there. Uh, I don't think I think he wants to go somewhere and get paid. And you've got the money as Detroit. You can bring this guy in and give him the contract that he wants. So I think that makes a lot of sense. If you're looking for help in Detroit, um, I think that's one way you could do it. And we talked about it all season. Who's opposite of Aiden? Julian Aquara, Romeo Aquara, um, nobody. Nobody. Hamlet the answer Aquara. is nobody. <laughs> what was the older guy that was there for a couple weeks? Um, oh, we, um, well, I know he James, had a pretty good week. James Houston came back oh, near the, the end of the Seattle. season. What was his face from West Virginia? He was very old. I know. You all will think of it. I'm going to keep us rolling, but you all will think of who this person was. I believe in both of you. Bruce Irvin. Yeah, there you go. go. Bruce. <laughs> That's just an old man's name. You don't meet like 24-year-olds yeah, named Bruce. No one's being named Bruce anymore. Not anymore. That's for sure. Yeah. So, yes, Detroit, send that 29th pick over to Carolina. <laughs> Get Brian Burns, pair him with Aiden Hutchinson, and let's fly, baby. Uh -huh. Addy, who do you want to talk about from the list we just mentioned? Oh, Josh. I Put love you on man. the spot. You're a good guy. You're a good guy. <laughs> Put you on the spot. Devin White's a good one, I think. I mean, this is a guy who has seen his value plummet uh, this past year. Um, we know about him getting benched to finish the, the season and then got actually benched in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So. Burns you. Burns you on that IDP prop. Made me look really bad on the IDP bet show. I'll never forgive him for that. Never forgive him for that. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, he's someone's going to look at the stats. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some dumb GM out there that doesn't believe in the analytics. And they're going to be looking at the box score. They're going to be oh talking God. like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. They're going to be a good old boy, salt of the earth, but a little dumb. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good heart. Dumber than a bag of hair. Very when it, dumb. When it comes to signing these players. Only think about tackles. And that's really it. Draft capital. Draft capital. Yeah. Which White has, has you know, he's he's killing it on those on those two ends. So, I mean, I think someone is going to, you know, give him a shot, right? He was just 
not motivated or I don't know. I don't know what was going on with Devin White, but what, so, someone will talk themselves into Devin White. What do you think Brad has him projected at contract wise? Uh, like a prove it deal, maybe like a one year, eight million locked in. One year, seven million for wow. Brad. You need to leave. You need to you get, need out. get out of here. Yeah, sure. I'm scared right, right now. You're making you gotta tell me <laughs> twice. Yeah, I'm getting the hell out of here. Take your beer with you. Get that out of the show. Just throw a check. <laughs> I want to talk about Chase Young because Chase Young is another guy that I think has seen his stock plummet. Uh, Brad has him projected on a similar kind of prove it deal. Now it's edge rusher, so you got to pay a little bit more for that position, but one year, fifteen million. Um, and then Mike has potential landing spots. Atlanta Falcons, Jacksonville Jaguars, Carolina Panthers, Philadelphia Eagles. Is there is one of those teams kind of uh, interest you all or uh, another landing spot you'd like to see Chase Young go? I mean, part of me yeah. wants to be out on Chase Young. I just don't. I don't. I don't know that we're ever going to see it. Honestly, mm-hmm. um, I mean, we got really excited about the first half of the season, and when you look back at the log, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. he was getting. You know, he had some fifteen point games, mm-hmm. but nothing special. Like nothing that we're like. Oh wow, this guy has just you know tremendous upside. I just don't. I'm not seeing it right now. Um, and we haven't seen it for a while since basically year one. Um, even the playoffs, you know, he the Super Bowl. He had he had the sack of the Super Bowl, and everyone's all woo. He's back. You also had the plays uh, where he was loafing in the, I think the previous game against the Packers. Yeah, and everyone's like, "What is Chase Young doing?" And you had the rumors come, like the NFL rumors account, like the 49ers might bench Chase Young because of a lack of effort in the playoffs. That's not good. But he's just one of those guys where if he does anything, people get excited about it. Yeah. But it's like. Ah, uh, it's just it's. We've really lowered the bar. We for really a guy have. That was a number two overall pick and once a top five uh, edge asset in IDP Dynasty. Yep. So, Bob, are you out on Chase Young? Oh yeah, I've been out. Yeah, I don't know, man. This one feels like. Um, it feels like that friend in high school that tells people now like how popular and cool he was. But you tell him, you're like, Josh, you weren't really that cool in high school. No one liked you. You You had no friends. Yeah. (laughs) You went to prom by yourself. (laughs) Reliving a lot of trauma here. Let's Uh, talk about Christian Wilkins real quick after after Chase Young. Y'all still up on uh, Christian Wilkins? I think, you know, he's still relatively young. I don't know that he probably stays there in Miami. I think he probably prices him out uh what does miami have yeah they have no cap they're negative 60 million in cap right yeah, now they're they're gonna have to make some very tough Ooh, decisions that is gonna be rough i think christian wilkins is gonna be elsewhere it's gonna be a nice little setup though for uh for christian wilkins i think um christian wilkins got a nice little idp um value set for the next couple they have of years. him getting franchise tagged brad does i don't uh, know that that doesn't seem possible to me that's a Fully guaranteed $21 million deal. Yeah, put some- so unless they're cutting some guys or converting some some salaries here to like signing bonuses and getting those cap numbers down, they're third they'll, worst they'll in the make, NFL. They'll Ugh. figure something out probably to keep him around. Negative $60 million is a lot of money to be in the hole. Yeah. If they ca- contract or franchise tagging, they'd be negative $80 million. Yeah. I mean, the know. Saints would be holding it. hands. Saints have a way around it. They just call the Saints. They can... Walk them well, the Saints walk just through what to do. The Saints just kick the can down the road, like yeah, it's all the restructuring. Twenty thirty, they're going to have negative three hundred million dollars on their cap <laughs> and have literal UFL players on the roster. Did you, did you mean for Miami to call the Saints or for the Saints to call the Saints? <laughs> the Saints to call. That's what definitely I, not the second yeah. one. I thought it was just like Saints were calling the Saints, like hey, they're y'all take care of this. Phones. Sorry. No, no I meant like the spiritual oh, saints. The saints. They need to call on the Saints to maybe uh, Sorry. take some of these uh, late. Take some of these contracts up to heaven, yeah, get they, them off their they're, books. They're in a tough spot for sure. So back half of the top 40 here, oh, boys. Uh, let's look at some of the guys that pique y'all's interest. We mentioned Bryce Huff. Let's talk about him here. 24 for Mike. Uh, big deal. A lot of money, according to Brad. Yeah. Um, Daddy, do you feel like you've been the original Bryce Huff believer? Do you feel like there is a point potentially coming this offseason where Bryce Huff is getting a little too much hype? I don't think so. I don't think so. You don't think he might, if he gets this big deal, lands in a spot where he has a starting role, that he could creep up a little too high in drafts for your liking? Okay, yeah, probably so. I mean, if he does get uh, if he does get that three-year, $50 million deal like like they're projecting, I mean, he he'll he'll end up being like a, I'd say a top thirty edge guy. Like right now, he's 
and he'll he'll just continue to to increase, especially once we get all the like the training camp buzz and everything, because he's gonna look awesome in pads. Uh, whoever wherever he goes, like the fan bases are gonna get excited about Bryce Huff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I do think we're gonna see. We'll probably see him flirt with you know, and these I'm thinking like the the IDP only best balls. We'll probably see him get to the fourth or fifth round. I'd say. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we could. And I mean, so that that would be like uh, edge twenty to thirty range. I think we'd easily see him get there, and I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, if you talk upside and and stuff like that, I mean, that's Bryce Huff, you know, yeah. all upside. Yep, we've seen a little bit, just yeah. just in small doses because the snaps have not been there. Right, but he's going to get paid, and the, that contract is going to equal him playing seventy percent of the snaps. I'd say for his new team and. Who knows what's going to happen at that point? I mean, if if you know if you believe the pressure rates and all that stuff, I mean, he should be due for about thirty-five to forty sacks. Let's play the matchmaking game because I think this could be fun. What was the sack total that you 30, just thirty-five to okay. forty? Okay, you just glossed over. Yeah, I was like, uh, I always uh, typically there's so much that I hear listening back to our episodes. I'm like, Jesus, Adam said that in the moment, and I just moved on. Uh, let's play matchmaker here. So we're looking at about an average of about 16 million. So let's look at teams with like 20 million or above and say, who would you rather Bryce Huff land with? Okay. So let's just start at the top commanders. That could be kind of fun. 61.8 million. Sure. Nobody there. So you're walking into as many snaps as you can handle. Uh, Patriots. No, thank you. Don't want anything to do with that. No, hell no. Bears. I think they're in the market for one of the bigger names, but could be fun opposite mm. Montez Sweat. You know what team that would make a lot of sense the is next one. the next one, Tennessee Titans. Yeah, That would make a lot of sense. $59 million. He's not going to the Bengals. I don't think he's going to the Colts. Texans, I think they'd rather keep Grenard. Lions, Lions would be fun. Lions could make Lions a lot of sense. Fun. 42.5. Cardinals, I mean, <sighs> shoot, who do they have there? Yeah. I mean, uh, Raiders, no, I think they're going to probably they ride with um, three Max good ones. and Tyreek. Mm-hmm. Or, um, uh, yeah, Tyree Kuhn. Wilson. And- Tyree Wilson and Malcolm Coons. Yep. That's a good trio. What about Rams, Bobo? Would you be interested? Hell yeah. Sure. Rams, bring them in. What did you say? What's the price difference between Huff and Brian Burns? Well, Brian Burns, you got to spend a, a first round pick. Probably you're going to have true. to trade for That's him, true. and then you're probably going to have to give him a deal north of twenty five million dollars per that, year. I'd rather do that if I'm the Rams. I agree. Don't give up the capital. Let's get this high upside guy for. He's going to cost half of what Brian Burns is going to cost, and it's going to be that window of Stafford. You've got yes two or three years for finish Stafford. up with, uh, Aaron Donald in his career. Cooper Cup, thirty years old. Yep, ride it out. That team, yeah, that team is competing for the next three years. Bryce mm-hmm. have to be a huge part of that. That'd be sick. Mm-hmm. I think uh, one guy I want to talk about that is getting slept on a little bit, Blake Cashman. Yeah. Was really good, especially by PFF. Uh, he clocks in here for Mike at number 22. Mike would like to see him back in Houston. Um, I think you could see that with the amount of cap space they have, $50.7 million. Um, but it kind of – Feels like Cashman might hit the open market. What do you think, Addy? Yeah, I hope he's not back in Houston just because that's going to make uh, it risky for Christian Harris. You know, if they bring anybody in, it's going to be like, oh, boy. He's yeah, going to be on a short leash. He can't mess up. So I just I don't want him back because I don't want that room to be too competitive. Um, but, yeah, I think Cashman, I mean, he's going to – Probably get paid pretty pretty good as out of all these linebackers. And yeah, I, Brad has him at two years, eight point five million. So that's not that's like that great. That's like an Aziz Al Shair type of deal where yeah. it's like pretty low money. I'm kind of surprised by that. I think he could end up getting more money. He was the eighth graded linebacker mm-hmm. yeah. by PFF. Yeah, I could see like two two years twelve. You know. Two years ten, two yeah. years twelve. I mean, I think he'll be a little more than that. I think that's a little low. Mm-hmm. But he'll be a sneaky pickup for somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think wherever he goes, Bobo, that's one of those late kind of linebacker targets. If you punt linebacker, mm-hmm. that could be a sneaky little ad. Like a Cody Barton, you know, when Cody Barton signed with Washington. Drew Tranquil. Exactly. It's one of those types. It, it may not seem that sexy, but, oh, you look up and this guy's he's got a top 24 finish. Yep. Let's talk about a couple edges here. What about Zadarius Smith and Andrew Van Ginkle? Um those could potentially be fun. I like them both, and Van Ginkle is an easy landing spot. Follow Fangio down there. Mm-hmm. Josh Sweat. Josh Sweat. You got the Hassan Reddick maybe wanting to trade out of there. He yeah. denied that, but yeah. that seemed like a lot of smoke and a lot of reporting for something that wasn't true. Sweat also kind of sucked last year. Um, 
I don't know. They could be looking to shake things up a little bit there and, in you Philadelphia. And, you know, Van Geekel was versatile. He could play him maybe as a traditional linebacker, too. With I mean, the, who do they have there at linebacker? N'Kobe Dean, everyone excited about, but he cannot stay healthy. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. That would be – that would be um, – that would be an interesting fit. I mean, just you see that a lot. You see these guys follow their their defensive yes. coordinators. Uh, these guys hand select these certain guys. So I'm, I'm kind of bummed out on Zadarius Smith. I really expected more from him last year, and that set up with Miles Garrett. Um, I thought you were going to see a better season from him. Was he hurt some last year? No, he was he was fine. Uh, and then you know all the all the PFF stuff. The pressure rate was was good okay. and solid. So he just wasn't getting home on sacks. I got you. But if you look at the grades, I mean, he he looked like he you know had a good season and all mm. that, just didn't get home. Yeah. So I'll be I'll be in on Zadarius Smith. What about this little pairing here of Legarius Sneed and Kenny Moore? Um, I think Sneed's got to go back to Kansas City. You think he's a franchise tag candidate? I mean, let's see if he let's see if Brad has Chris Jones or Legarius Sneed getting the franchise tag. He has Chris Jones signing a new deal. Wow. Four years, one hundred and twenty million dollars. Because Jones was tagged last year. No, no, it was a one-year deal for Jones last yeah, year. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, so I was going to say, I, I think, here's what I'm guessing. They've got Chris Jones signing a new deal and Sneed. No, they've got Sneed signing a new deal as well. Three years, 52.5, 17.5 per year average. With another team? He just says that that's what he thinks the projected contract will be. Yeah, I feel like Sneed's probably going to leave. Yeah, you know, it's man. Just, they, it's hard for these Super Bowl teams to – Bring all these guys back. I mean, they they got to. If you're the Chiefs, you bring them back Chris Jones or Legereus Sneed? Chris Jones. Mm-hmm. And it's not even close. You got Trent McDuffie there. I yeah. mean, it's. it's. Yeah. I mean, $120 million is a lot of money. You've also gotten worth a lot though. out of some nobodies. You know, you brought in a uh, veteran Mike Edwards, who played really well in the playoffs last season. Um, you got older Justin Reed, who maybe had one of the best seasons of his career in Kansas City and probably didn't have to pay him. You know, crazy money. I think that I think Adam's right. I think that uh, Chris Jones is integral to you know pressure in the interior there for the um, for the Chiefs and the way that they like to play the ball. They like to you know try to get pressure up the middle, make some dumb plays. And uh, you're right, you do have Legarius um, Legarius. You do have Trent McDuffie there, who's kind of the up and comer. I don't know. Uh, it's if, you gonna, lost, if you lost Chris Jones, that would be devastating for that defense. I agree. It's going to suck to see Snead go, but I do think he probably ends up on a different team. Hard yeah. to say. You know, they're losing a lot there. Losing Willie Gay, losing Drew Tranquil. That's a good one we should talk about. I was going to say, I've got him pulled up. I wanted to talk about him next because I actually liked some of Mike's real, landing spots. Real quick, Kenny yeah. Moore gone, you think? Kenny Moore's back. Okay. I'm, I'm calling that right now. Okay. I think New we bring... Or- um, yeah, let's see what he has Kenny Moore projected at. Colts right now at fifty-four million in cap space. Yeah, he has him at two years, thirteen point five million, okay. six point seven five. So if that's the if that's the asking price, that is a slam dunk all day. Colts are doing that. I think Blackman is back. Uh, well, he could be gone. He has him at two years, eleven point five. If all these guys are going for around that price, I think we're bringing back and all these guys. Yeah, if Blackman's gone, uh, I guess Nick Cross just slides right in. I think uh, they'll bring in somebody. They'll though, bring probably. in somebody. I'm, I'm not jumping <laughs> aboard the Nick Cross train. Uh, it's possible. It's possible that they just yeah. he needed a couple years to season, but I'll believe it when I see it. Let's talk about Willie Gay though, because um, Brad has him projected at one year's three one year three point seven five million. So absolutely That's very a low. Prove it deal. I think he'll get a little more than that. Yeah, I do too. Because uh, he's young. I think I could see kind of like what we were talking about for Cashman. A two years, ten to twelve million dollar total. Deal. I was surprised at what some of those like. Um, I was surprised Kate Nelson got what he got. You know. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, just we, takes one team. Yeah, I th- we could see, and also the caps going up. Teams are going to have you know potentially a, an extra eight million. I saw. Yeah, so it's going to be up to two hundred fifty million. Two hundred fifty million is the rumor going th- up from like what two twenty four. Two twenty four. Yep, that's a big deal. I think about Willie Gay a lot in terms of Aziz Alshair last year. Aziz mm-hmm. signed a one year five million dollar contract with the Titans. I can see Willie Gay doing a lot of the same. Yeah, I mean, he uh, Mike has some landing spots here at Dallas Cowboys, Cleveland oh. Browns, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If they let Devin White go, which I think is almost a certainty, bring back Levante David, pair Willie Gay, Levante David, yes, please. Yep. Uh, JOK and Willie Gay, that'd be a lot of fun to talk about. And then Dallas Cowboys, I mean, they desperately need linebackers. So, Could yeah. Willie Gay um, be the LB1 anywhere? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think in Dallas he would be LB1. Yeah. Um, in Las Vegas, he would be LB1. 
Um, in Washington, I think he could be right there. Yeah, uh, is Cody Barton back on the market or is UFA. he UFA? So Jamin Davis is Jamin Davis. He is, was a first round pick. He's so the only he's, one there. Yeah, so it'd be Cause Jamin Hudson to UFA as well. Yeah, so that's another um, guy. I mean, Clicky Hudson could go yeah. somewhere and and have an opportunity. Yeah, mm-hmm. that would be a sneaky signing as well. Yep. Uh, but there are some teams I think where he could go. I would love to see him in Dallas. That'd be yeah, yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. Or paired up, Tampa Bay does have the cap space to make it work. Uh, they are at twenty, about twenty nine million in effective cap space. Uh, I was looking to see the Cowboys are twenty four million over the cap. Uh, but my guess is they will probably sign Dak to a huge deal, yeah. give him a big signing bonus, and get that cap number down. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I think right now this is probably factoring in his humongous cap hit. Um, okay. So I think they're going to be okay once they get that DAC contract figured out. So, um, yes, Willie Gay, I've said uh, earlier this offseason, he is one that I'm extremely interested in. I think he is like Bobby in that Bobby Okereke mold. I think Patrick Queen is the, the upside is there, right? Yeah, the Bobby Okereke is Patrick Queen for me this year, but mm-hmm. like the light version of that is Willie Gay. Mm. So, um, anyone else you boys want to talk about from um, this list or the free agency tracker? Um, Lawrence Armstrong is a guy who has popped at times down there in uh, in Dallas, and if he signed a a decent little deal somewhere else, that could be an interesting uh, an interesting grab in some of these late best balls. I've always kind of been a Dorrance Armstrong uh, believer. Yeah, I think there's some yeah. meat on the bone there. Mm-hmm. I think he's got you know some good playing years ahead of Still him. Relatively young. Chauncey Garner Johnson's going to be out there. Where's he going to land? I think he's a fun piece. There's a lot of uh, interesting guys out there, and guys that I think could actually hit the market too, right? Mm-hmm. Right. The actual free agents who hit the market typically gets chopped down quite a bit by re-signings and yeah, franchise like tags. Half this list is probably going to get tagged. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like you know, there's players like Jerome Baker, mm-hmm. um, Brandon Jones in Miami. Uh, we didn't talk about Jordan Hicks. He could go somewhere and be, and be very relevant again for us. I Brad mean, Brad has Gardner Johnson at one year, five point three three million. Mm-hmm. So if he's signing another prove it deal, come on over to Indy. I'd mm-hmm. rather have CJ Gardner Johnson than Julian Blackman. Yeah, here's another one that I like. Uh, Anthony Jennings. Mm-hmm. I thought he was really good in New England. He averaged nine points per game last season. Um, he's UFA. He he's twenty seven. You know, kind of entering his prime. So he's sneaky. Xavier McKinney. There's a lot. It's a lot. AJ Your boy Epinesa. Isaiah Simmons is a UFA. Yeah. Um, they have Anthony Jennings getting that deal we've been talking about, but two years, ten point five million. Nice. So, uh, one thirty nine overall for PFF. Leonard Williams is a UFA, but I imagine Seattle brings him back. Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan Whitehead is a UFA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have Leonard Williams getting a new contract, three years, fifty one point seven five million. So. I think if you're Seattle, you probably do that. What's their cap space? I think they're actually in the red. Yeah, they're 5.5 5 over the cap right now. Uh, let's see. Denzel Perriman's a free agent. That's interesting. Josie Jewell is someone that I think could – like what if Josie Jewell lands in Philly? Mm-hmm. Mm. That'd be filthy. Mm-hmm. That'd be really he'd, he'd, nice. He'd get 160 tackles next year. There season. might be some frustration there enough to where Philly, you know, does something like that. Mm-hmm. He's another one in that range we've been talking about. Two years, 12.5, according to Brad. <laughs> yeah, so I like I like that. Buda um, Baker. Buda Baker, that's a good one. Uh, Akeem Davis Gaither is a free agent. Like, does he get an opportunity somewhere? He's been buried there in Cincinnati behind uh, Jermaine Pratt and Logan Wilson mm-hmm. just to – Give the folks a deeper dive. Yeah, Josie Jewell, Mike had Chargers, Cardinals, Eagles. Mm. All of those would be very fun. Yeah. He'd have, like, see, he'd be LB1, I think, for all of those teams. is Because Kendricks is, he's not a UFA, is he? But uh, I think he's a Eric cut. Kendricks? Yeah, I think he's a cut candidate. Right, he's a cut candidate. Yeah. Um, AJ Epinesa is out there. I know yeah. you've been a little bit hot in the pants for AJ. I like him. I, I, he's he's impressed me every time I've, I've caught a Buffalo game. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I think he could be a sneaky pickup, have an, a much better second contract with mm-hmm. the team. Um, Kyle Van Noy out there, Leonard Floyd. Uh, Leonard Floyd just had ten and a half sacks again. I'm I'm assuming Jadevian Clowney's back on the market as well. Clowney's back on the market, just coming off one year mercenary deals. Forty three tackles and nine and a half sacks for Clowney in in 2023. We didn't really talk Jeremy Chin that much. I was just looking at that, Bob. Yeah, uh, that's a pretty glaring name there. Um, they could really have a turnaround season if the you know, landing spot was right, and and you know the play 
Uh, he got some more snaps. I don't really know exactly what's going on with Jeremy Chin, but if things could turn around back towards early career Jeremy Chin, um, the ADP could really um, return in our favor. I know they have Richie Grant there and Jesse Bates, but that would be kind of fun, yeah. right? And that's another thing, too. Follow coaches, mm -hmm. but also look at divisional opponents. Mm -hmm. These teams know – their divisional opponents and their players better than anyone else yeah. because they play them more frequently each season. So um, that could be kind of fun. I mean, what about Jeremy Chin on a little prove it deal in Tampa Bay? Mm -hmm. yeah. That could be fun as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the Saints are, you know, negative uh, four hundred million dollars. Uh, you know, they have to sell their soul each year. So I don't really want to peg anyone to them. Literally negative eighty point five million. Wow. Uh, in cap space. Good God. So I don't know how they do it. Uh, Derek well, Barnett. They do it. He remember Derek Barnett? Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, I think it was that was your original. Sure was. Wasn't it like the first episode we did. Him, the Orrin Burks, Dark and Horse uh, Minka. Breakouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Derek Barnett finished the year very well in Houston. Uh, he's a UFA. Just took five years, Bubbo. Yeah. Hey, he's just check check mark. Turning twenty eight. So I mean, he can you know he could still be fine. You know who I'm seeing get a lot of Derek Barnett comps? Old Chop Robinson. Oh, oh Chop. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> so let's look at some of these teams at the top of the free agent, um, you know, spending potential because of the cap space. Um, commanders, let's just start there because I think this – Commanders I'd like to see spend along the defensive line, right? Getting rid of Montez Sweat, mm -hmm. getting – but then it's the question of like, okay, Bears, you let – Roquan Smith go out the door because you didn't want to pay this guy. And then mm. you paid Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Edwards a, ton. a trillion dollars yeah. combined. Mm. So it's like, commanders, do you want to go shopping in the, you know, expensive edge aisle when you could have just paid Montez Sweat? Mm. Um, but I, I could see like a Bryce Young or a Bryce Huff end up there. Um you know, the Bears, I think, are going to be in the market for an edge rusher. That seems almost certain. Mm -hmm. um, Titans, I think, Bobo, could be a really fun landing spot for one of these edges. Or We're, linebackers. I mean, bring somebody in along Aziz, uh, beside Aziz al -Shair. We talked about some of these edges, but Christian Wilkins is a guy that just kind of piques my interest. Where do y'all see it, the need for a, you know, defensive tackle here with some teams that have some money? Um Put him there in Washington. Uh, well, Duran Payne and Jonathan <laughs> Allen have a DT off. The <laughs> DT off. What about the Bears? I mean, honestly, you could you could. Uh, That'd be great. That'd be really good. Who is the dude yes. who retired? Uh, I don't know if he retired. He kind of phased out um, a couple years ago. Great defensive tackle for the Bears um, for several years. Just several years ago is when he kind of jumped out of here. Nope. It's not nothing. I'm, I'm in that filing cabinet and there's nothing there. Um, I was going to say the Colts are an interesting one to me because I don't really feel like because the Colts just like to re-sign their own guys. That's just Chris Ballard wants to draft, develop, and re-sign. We don't typically blow the doors off in free agency. I think we're going to re-sign Pittman, re-sign Braden Smith, re-sign Grover Stewart. Akeem Hicks. There you go. Yeah. Yes. Resign um, Kenny Moore. We might resign Julian Blackman. Um, but I think if we let Blackman go, we could be in the market for a safety. I don't think we're going to be shopping in the linebacker aisle. Um, we could be in the Bryce Huff market, you know. Um, we've got a nice edge rush. Yeah, I got a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we got a good group, but like Quiddy Pay hasn't really been what they thought he was going to be. Samson Ebucam was pretty good. He's there for another couple years. You got Dio Odangbo. Mm -hmm. I could see them reinforcing that, though. Um, the interior is pretty good, especially if they bring back Grover Stewart. Um, I would like to see the Texans bring back Grenard. I think that is going to be the most likely outcome now that I see their cap space. Mm -hmm. And please, for the love of God, can we get a, an edge rusher in Detroit alongside Aiden Hutchinson? Mm -hmm. Is that y'all's number one like wish list item? Yeah, I think so. For IDP free agency? Bobo, anything different? Who do you want your Rams? Michaels, I don't I don't think we're gonna be big spenders in free agency. I'm in on the let's use Matt Stafford for as long as we've got him. Matt Stafford's a special quarterback. You only have these type of guys in this type of window so often in uh in life. Let's just, you know, burn that candle bright for the next two or three years. You know, throw every asset that you have um to that window. Go get Brian Burns for you know, three years, however many million you feel like it's going to, you know, take to sign him, give up that first. I'm all for that. Uh, I don't think you have time to sit and wait to 
make sure that a Bryce Huff or a Jonathan Grenard is really right. All right, so Bobo's uh, come around on the whole Brian Burns thing. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, that's a team that's, that's shown that they're pretty aggressive when yeah. it comes to getting guys. And I don't, I'm not always that fan either that's like, yeah, I want my team to have the best player. I just think that for the Rams right now, yeah. for the window that they're in, to 19th, play with Aaron Donald. 19th overall pick. Yeah, it makes the most sense. Would you rather have a – would you rather use that on like a Latu? Nope. Or trade it for a Burns? Give me Burns. Give me Burns. We've seen that he can do it. You know, Latu's got a little bit of the injury kind of risk and everything. And and even with Latu or even with a Chop Robinson or even with a, a uh, you know, a Jonah Ellis, one of these other guys that's going to be behind Dallas Turner and Jared Verse – do you have two or three years to sit and wait to see if they develop? I don't yeah. think the answer is yes. You see how close the Rams got with Byron Young and Kobe Turner. You know, dear God, you can't tell me they're going to play any worse and with you put Brian a, you Burns. You drop a Brian Burns in Absolutely. there, suddenly that's frisky. And then that elevates Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald doesn't have as much attention on him anymore. Now, Bob, what about this? What if sure. with that 19th pick you take Cooper DeGene? Hey, now we're talking. And yeah, then you sign Bryce Huff. Super Bowl. Uh, hey, that's pretty sick. Leaders. That's pretty sick. you got to play that scenario out because I think that's – Rams secondary kind of sucks anyway. So yeah. That's um, a possibility. Yeah. You got two Coopers on the same team. You can have a Cooper off. Hey. And Jordan Fuller is a free agent, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yes, we indeed. didn't talk about him. Uh, and John Johnson. Here's yeah. something I'm interested in. Raiders and Cardinals linebacker landing spots. Both have about $30.5 million in effective cap space. Both have one linebacker there in Diablo and Kaiser White. So It's the line, too. Yeah. I, I'm I'm – Curious now with Antonio Pierce as the head coach, former linebacker himself, right? Wasn't Pierce yes. a linebacker? Yes. So, um, Giants. you know, Cardinals, you got Jonathan Gannon there as the defensive head coach. Um, Man, so, just those teams just, they have so many more problems than linebacker. It seems like that's going to be a landing spot for like a Cashman. Um, you know, one of these really deep I don't think guys. they're going to spin big. Yeah. But I think they could go grab a Willie Gay for one year five or yeah, maybe. a Cashman, that. you know, for, you know, maybe two years ten just or something. Just to kind of tread water. I mean, that would be huge if they landed in Arizona, I think. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm just paying attention there because there are these, like, deserts at certain positions, right, mm -hmm. that, um, like, if Frankie Louvu walks, the Panthers have oh, uh, yeah. 24 – uh, twenty four point seven million in effective cap space. Even, so even your Vikings could bring a linebacker in. Yeah, probably should. Honestly, I think I think they let Jordan Hick, Jordan Hicks walk, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they've got uh, let's Ivan see. Pace and your boy Brian Asamoa. They've and got they about have, nineteen point three. They got to make some room if they're going to bring Kirk back. If they're going to re-sign JJ ooh, or yeah, extend JJ, uh, Harrison Smith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know how it is. I don't know. I don't know where all the money's gone. Yeah. No, we didn't do it. Wow. There's a, there's a Ponzi scheme we going on in Minnesota. I want to look at the people books. People in Minnesota those listening are like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Have we looked at this? <laughs> why is uh, why is Brett Favre getting 97 million against the cap over the next three years? No, it's all been uh, Kirk. I mean, yeah. Kirk yeah. and and then Hunter was expensive, mm -hmm. but then Harrison Smith was expensive. Mm -hmm. They got rid of Kendricks. Be. He's like 40. You need to pay by you. I wonder how much of that is dead cap, potentially. Yeah. So there you go, folks. Free agency preview. Make sure you check out Mike Willard's debut article at the, IDP, at the IDP show.com. And uh, like I said, we've got, I think, about 20 or so articles lined up for Mike this offseason. That's so right. you're going to be getting a lot of Wallert from the IDP show.com, all for free, uh, except for the draft kit. So go check out his work. And, um, yeah, if you enjoyed this episode, five-star rating and review over on Apple Podcasts, five stars mm -hmm. on Spotify. Uh, check us out over on YouTube, youtube.com slash at the IDP show. Follow us on Twitter if you want to. I think we still have an Instagram up there. Sure. Yeah. You know my new thing that I hate? Everyone that says the uh, – uh, I'm on Twitter or X. Yeah, yeah. it's just Twitter, guys. Just, yeah, just, just say Twitter. Stop yeah, it. I saw someone that was like, if you if someone says X, you know exactly where they were on January sixth. I was like, yep, <laughs> yep, that pretty much is a one to one kind of ratio. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, don't call it X. The only people that call it X are like social media managers who have to stay up on the vernacular. Right. Just call it Twitter. Sure. We all know what you're talking about. Love Twitter. Yeah, no one calls it X.
Sure. No one calls it X Bobo. <laughs> I just go to uh, the IDP show dot com. I didn't go to X. That's anymore. right. Yeah. It's He's, the only page on the internet that matters. That's it, brand man. <laughs> Come check it out. Uh, but yes, uh, what's, we, your, what's your crazy? What's your crazy landing spot? All of a sudden, I'm you look up. Bring this on me. I'm trying to land the plane. I was up like, back up in the air, baby. All of a sudden, you look up and you're like, whoa! I'm gonna say uh, Willie Gay to the Bengals. Oh, that would wow. be crazy. I don't know. Just yeah, that'd be fun. Jermaine Pratt, Logan Wilson, both there. Jermaine Pratt. I'm out of here. Just Jermaine dead. Pratt. Out of here. Pratt's fine. Yeah. Pratt's fine. Don't he's talk solid. bad about Keem Pratt. Davis Gayford. He's, he's going to be there. Oh, I, I did uh, do your thing. I did do some contract <laughs> stuff in here. Um, do your thing. <laughs> there could be some cuts, too. There could be some. I guess we, we don't have time to do it, folks. But <laughs> No, who was who was some possible cut candidates? Um, I have to look. I'm looking to see. Like I want to see who is the grenade that could possibly be lobbed into these kind of assumptions that we have. Yeah. Um, I think I really don't see like a Winfield um, going anywhere besides Tampa Bay. I don't think Josh Allen's leaving Jacksonville. Uh, what you got, Addy? Uh, Dre, uh, Dre Greenlaw. We talked about this in the chat. Oh, yes, yeah. that's right. He's definitely getting cut. I mean, he, you know, of course, he tours Achilles in the Super Bowl, but he has a uh, – San Fran would save $6.8 million if they cut him <laughs> this offseason. He gone. Um Jermaine Pratt, they do have an out. They could save 6.8 as well for cutting Jermaine Pratt. Justin Reed could be cut, and they'd save $10.7 million. Okay. I know Justin Reed was really good, but that is a, a lot of a, money. Yeah, it's a nice cap savings. Mm-hmm. I, I do think Chris Jones gets re-signed by the Chiefs. I think that's the most likely outcome, but I think that could be a possible grenade that gets that blows up our assumptions of what we thought this is. Chris Jones doesn't stay. Chris Jones hits the free agency market. How old is he? He's uh, almost 30. 31. Yeah. I got you. 31? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's, I, he's up there. I just think they had a chance to get Jones re signed last offseason to a long term extension and didn't do it. Yeah. Now he's a year older. Um, I saw where he said he's coming back, though. Yeah. I agree. I, I think it happens, but that one could be a grenade. I'm just trying to look at like what could possibly blow up. Um, like, I think Christian Wilkins probably ends up on another team. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see a lot of these, like, guys, you know, Matabike. Matabike could be um, one that doesn't end up back in Baltimore. Um, you know, Levante David, Bobby Wagner, mm-hmm. I think they're likely back with their teams from 2023, but you never know. C.J. Mosley could be cut. They'd save $11 million cutting him. Oh, wow. wow. That's probably the grenade that yeah. we're not talking about is yeah. some of these guys that are going to get cut. Right. Uh, Joey Bosa, they could uh, the Chargers could save fourteen point four million cutting him. Either they could or, save twenty three point three million cutting Khalil Mack. I think they both get cut. Wow. I really which do. is insane to think about. Uh, Kevin Byard could be cut and they'd save thirteen and a half million. Mm-hmm. Philly. It's it sounds crazy until you consider the Chargers are forty five million dollars over the cap. Mm-hmm. Jonathan Allen could be cut, and they'd save nine point four million. I think. I think back to last year, how just pissed off Jonathan Allen was on <laughs> yeah. the bench. I mean, you never know. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I mean, there's a lot of stuff that it's probably going to happen. Jamal Adams can be cut for six point one million. Jamal in Adams savings. is definitely getting cut. Um, hundred percent. Max Crosby. I'm just kidding. Can you imagine? <laughs> no. Max Crosby hits the free agency pile. Like, get out of here, Max. Cole Holcomb could be cut, and they'd save four million. I mean, that's a that's a, a possibility now. I mean, that injury that he had was terrible. He's getting mm-hmm. cut. It looked awful. Yeah, he's getting cut. Julian Love can be cut, and they save five point seven million. He's getting cut. What yep. about Matt Milano? He's they no, he see they him. restructured they restructured his contract right before he tore his ACL. Wow. Yep, he's and back. So they don't have an an out until twenty seven, maybe. He is Buffalo loves them some Matt Milano. Uh, yeah. They they re-sign this guy every chance they get. They don't have it out until 2026 on Matt Milano. Yeah, he there. So there you go, folks. I am landing this plane. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. We're if, right at an hour. If I'm the GM in Buffalo, I'm having Milano Day, where you get to the game, there's a thing of Milano cookies sitting in your seat. And then you cut them that same day. That brand. That brand Does partnership, ease the man. sting a little bit? <laughs> like you got cut off mid. I'm landing this thing. Yeah. Nope. We're going to talk in, Milano the yeah, cookies yeah, real quick. Yeah, I'm in yeah. Buffalo. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to bed, boys. Um, well, thank you all for tuning in to this episode. Uh, we have, like we said, the Combine Recap will be the next time you hear from us. Uh, we've got a ton of great stuff available on the website right now. Best balls are rolling. Oh, yeah. We're um, through four already. 
Yeah. Also, yeah. we'll say that felt just so much more natural uh, talking IDP over. Yeah. We did the offense uh, mm-hmm. our last episode. Yeah, offense is tough. It's a little tough. A little different. We don't. We're not. You know, we're used to used stretch. To you're not yeah. used to stretching those muscles. Are yeah. going to wake up with sore backs. Felt more comfortable. Yes, mm-hmm. much more in our element. Sure. Uh, so if you want to sound off on YouTube, telling us to stick to IDP again, go for it. Uh, yes, sir. Knock yourselves out. Uh, we should mention we've got some really fun episodes coming up for you all. Uh, we will be doing the 2023 rookie redraft with John Macri. Uh, we're going to have some very fun guests lined up for the. DL, DB, and LB preview episodes. Uh, something special cooking for the DL preview for the 2024 rookies. So just stay tuned, folks. This is a lot of fun this time of year. You don't want to miss out with free agency right around the corner. It's like combine, free agency, and then draft ramp up. Uh, and then we're in the meat of the off season there in the summer, uh, bringing more content y'all's way. So just stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come ride with us. Um, the on season is here, boys. Nobody else putting in the work That's outside right. of maybe Macri. Yeah. Macri's putting in the work. <laughs> yeah. Macri's always. But other than that, in, other than Macri and us, it's the IDP show, folks. But until we are gathering together to talk combine, y'all take care, and we'll see you soon. It's the IDP show. Now you know.